Welcome to the Voice of the World. Topic for this episode is Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution was transition to new manufacturing processes in Europe and United States in the period from about 1760 to sometime between 1820 and 1840. The transition included going from hand production methods to machines, a new chemical manufacturing and iron production processes, the increasing use of steam power, water power, the development of machine tools, and the rise of mechanized factory system. The Industrial Revolution also led to an unprecedented rise in the rate of population growth. Textiles were the dominant industry of the Industrial Revolution in terms of employment, value of output, and the capital invested. The textile industry was also the first to use modern production methods. The Industrial Revolution began in Great Britain and many of the technological innovations were from British origin. By the mid-18th century, Britain was world's leading commercial nation, controlling a global trading empire with colonies in North America and Caribbean and with major military and political hegemony on the Indian subcontinent, particularly with the proto-industrialized Mughal Bengal through the activities of East India Company. The development of trade and the rise of business was among the major causes of the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution marks a major turning point in history. Almost every aspect of daily life was influenced in some way. In particular, average income and population began to exhibit unprecedented sustained growth. Some economists have said the most important effect of the Industrial Revolution was that the standard of living for the general population in the Western world began to increase consistently for the first time in history, although others have said that it did not begin to meaningfully improve until the late 19th and 20th centuries. GDP per capita was broadly stable before the Industrial Revolution and the emergence of the modern capitalist economy, while the Industrial Revolution began an era of per capita economic growth in capitalist economies. Economic historians are in agreement that the onset of the Industrial Revolution is the most important event in the history of humanity since the domestication of animals and plants. Cotton spinning machine was invented in Great Britain in 1783 by Richard Arkwright. Spinning mills were introduced to United States in 1790 by English-born mechanist and businessman Samuel Slatter. The 21-year-old had worked as a textile laborer for more than six years in English mill where he learned the workings of Arkwright's machine, which the British considered the cornerstone of their booming textile industry. Laws prevented anyone with knowledge of mill from leaving the country. In 1789, Slater determined he could recreate the spinning mill and eager to seek his own fortune, disguised himself to evade the authorities and left the country, sailing from England for America, American shores. Arriving in Providence, Rhode Island, he formed a partnership with the textile firms Almy and Brown. Slater began building a spinning mill based on Arkwright machine. This he did from memory. The spinning mill was debuted December 20, 1790 in the village of Pocket, Rhode Island, where the wheels of the mill were turned by the waters of the Blackstone River. The machine was a success and soon revolutionized the American textiles industry, which previously relied on cottage work workers to manufacture thread and yarn. Slater's innovation, which would earn him title father of the American textile industry, spawned the factory system in the United States. By 1815, there were 165 cotton mills in New England, all working to the capacity. The early mills were not large scale. However, and for a time after Slater's introductions, New England mills and the merchants continued to rely on home workers to weave threads into cloth. In 1813, the Boston Manufacturing Company opened the first textile industry. The laborers ran spinning and weaving machines to produce woven cloth from start to finish. The advent of machinery had given rise to the factory system, and laborers were shifted from working in their homes to working in factories. 
while native New Englanders continued to provide the labor for the textile industry for the next two decades, an influx of immigrants in mid 1800 provided the hungry manufacturers with a steady supply of laborers who were willing to work for less money and longer hours. Within the first three decades of 1800s, New England became the center of nation's textile industry. The region's ample rivers and streams provided the necessary water power, and the commercial centers of the Boston and New York City readily received the finished products. Labor proved to be in supply as well. Since the mill machinery was not complicated, children could operate it, and did. Slater hired children ages 7 to 14 to run the mill, a practice that other New England textile factories also adopted. The Jefferson Embargo of 1807, which prohibited importing textiles, also aided the industry. New England's mills provided the model for the American factory system. Slater had brought the Industrial Revolution to America. The precise start and the end of Industrial Revolution is still debated among historians, as is the pace of economic and social changes. Eric Hobbes Baum held the Industrial Revolution began in Britain in 1780s and was not fully felt until 1830s or 1840s, while T. Ashton held that it occurred roughly between 1760 and 1830. Rapid industrialization first began in Britain, starting with mechanized spinning in 1780s with high rates of growth in the steam power and iron production occurring in 1800. Mechanized textile production spread from Great Britain to continental Europe and United States in the early 19th century with the, import, uh, with, uh, with the important centers of textiles, iron and coal emerging in Belgium and United States and later textiles in France. In 1750, Britain imported 2.5 million pounds of raw cotton, most of which was spun and woven by cottage industry in Lenshire. The work was done by hand in workers' homes or occasionally in shops of master weavers. In 1789, raw cotton consumption was 22 million pounds, most of which was cleaned, carded and spun on machines. The British textile industry used 52 million pounds of cotton in 1800, which increased to 588 million pounds in 1850. The share of value added by the cotton textile industry in Britain was 2.6 percentage in 1760 and 17 percentage in 1801 and 22.4 percentage in 1831. Value added by British woolen industry was 14.1% in 1801. Cotton factories in Britain numbered approximately 900 in 1797. In 1760, approximately one third of the cotton cloth manufacturing in Britain was exported, rising to two thirds by 1800. In 1781, cotton spun amounted to 5.1 million pounds, which increased to 56 million pounds by 1800. In 1800, less than 0.1% of world's cotton cloth was produced on machinery invented in Britain. In 1788, there were 50,000 spindles in Britain, rising to 7 million over next 30 years. Parts of India, China, Central Asia, South America and Middle East have a long history of hand manufacturing cotton textiles, which became a major industry sometime after 1000 AD. In tropical and subtropical regions where it was grown, most was grown by small farmers alongside their food crops and was spun and woven in households, largely for domestic consumption. In the 15th century, China began to require households to pay part of their taxes in cotton cloth. By 17th century, almost all Chinese wore cotton clothing. Almost everywhere, cotton cloth could be used as a medium of exchange. In India, a significant amount of cotton textiles were manufactured for distant markets, often produced by professional weavers. Some merchants also owned small weaving workshops. India produced a variety of cotton cloth, some of exceptionally fine quality. Although the mechanization dramatically decreased the cost of cotton cloth by the mid-19th century, machine woven cloth still could not equal the quality of hand-woven Indian cloth, in part due to the fineness of thread made possible by the type of cotton used in India, which allowed high thread counts.
However, the high productivity of British textile manufacturing allowed coarser grades of British cloth to undersell hand spun and woven fabric in low wage India, eventually destroying the industry. Wages in Lancashire, a core region for cottage industry, and later factory spinning in weaving were about six times those in India in 1770, when overall productivity in Britain was about three times higher than in India. British cloth could not compete with Indian cloth because India's labor cost was approximately one-fifth to one-sixth that of Britain's. In, 19, in 1700 and 1721, the British government passed Calico Act in order to protect the domestic woolen and linen industries from increasing the amounts of cotton fabric imported from India. Trade in textiles. The age of discovery was followed by a period of colonialism beginning around 16th century. Following the discovery of trade route to India around southern Africa by Portuguese, the Dutch established the Weringid Companying VOC or Dutch East India Company, the world's first transnational corporation and the first multinational enterprise to issue shares of stock of public. The British later founded East India Company along with smaller companies of different nationalities which established trade trading posts and employed agents to engage in trade throughout Indian re Ocean region and between the Indian Ocean region and North Atlantic Europe. One of the largest segments of this trade was in cotton textiles which were purchased in India and sold in Southeast Asia including Indonesia archipelago, where the spices were purchased for sale to Southeast Asia and Europe. By mid-1760s, cloth was over three quarters of East India Company's exports. Indian textiles were in demand in North Atlantic region of Europe, where previously only wool and linen were available. However, the amount of cotton goods consumed in Western Europe was minor until early 19th century. Cotton in Indian subcontinent. The latest archaeological discovery in Mehargarh puts the dating of early cotton cultivation and the use of cotton to 5000 BCE. The Indus Valley civilization started cultivating cotton by 3000 BCE. Cotton was mentioned in Hindu hymns in 1500 BC. Herodotus, an ancient Greek historian, mentions Indian cotton in 5th century BC as a wool exceeding in beauty and goodness that of sheep. When Alexander the Great invaded India, his troops started wearing cotton clothes that were more comfortable than their previous woolen ones. Strabo, another Greek historian, mentioned the vividness of Indian fabrics. The Aryan told the Indian Arab trade of cotton fabrics in 130 BC. India has been an exporter of fine cotton fabrics to other countries since the ancient times. Sources such as Marco Polo who travelled India in 13th century, Chinese travellers who travelled Buddhist pilgrim centres earlier, Vasco da Gama who entered uh, Calicut in 1498 and Tavernier, who visited India in 17th century, have praised the superiority of Indian fabrics. The warm gear roller, the cotton gin, which was invented in India during the early Delhi Sultanate era in 13th-14th centuries, came into use sometime around 16th century and is still used in India through the present day. Another innovation, the incorporation of the crank handle in cotton gin first appeared in India sometime during the late Delhi Sultanate or early Mughal Empire. The production of cotton, which may have largely been spun in villages and then taken to towns in form of yarn to be woven into cloth textiles, was advanced by the diffusion of spinning wheels across India shortly before Mughal era, lowering the cost of yarn and helping to increase demand of cotton. The diffusion of spinning wheel and the incorporation of the warm gear and crank handle into the roller cotton gin led to greatly expanded Indian cotton textile production during the Mughal era. India boasts the world's largest area of planted cotton and is expected to become the world's second largest cotton producer. Cotton is predominantly grown in central India. 
Over half of India's cotton production comes from the states of Gujarat, Maharashtra and Andhra Pradesh. Hoping to reverse the trend of declining yields and profitability, millions of Indian cotton farmers have adopted genetically modified or transgenic cotton seeds. These seeds, known as BT cotton seeds, have allowed production to ri ri rise substantially, from 11 million bales in 2002 to 23 million bales in 2006. Production of raw cotton in India was highest in 2014, which was almost 40 million bales. In 2020, India produced 32.2 2 million bales of cotton. India is currently the highest producer of cotton followed by China and USA. India, China and USA combined account for two-thirds of the world cotton production. In India, Gujarat is the highest producer of cotton, 35%, followed by Maharashtra, 21% and Andhra Pradesh, 14%. Conventional cotton is widely used fiber. Around half of all textiles contain cotton. As a crop, it sits within a top 20 most valuable agricultural crop and livestock products. It employs hundreds of millions of people worldwide and many farmers. It employs almost 7% of all labor in developing countries. Organic cotton represents about 0.7% of global cotton production. 19 countries are farming the organic cotton. India is making the lion's share of it, 67%. The US is probably the top consumer of organic cotton. It takes three years for a farmland to be certified organic. Conventional cotton receives many subsidies and also doesn't pay heavy penalties for a lot of environmental and social harm it might do. Conventional cotton is improving in some sustainability measures over time, such as amount of land and water required to grow cotton in some countries. GE seeds might provide some benefits to cotton growing. Having said that, the countries like India still use almost double the global average of water to produce 1 kg cotton. Areas where cotton might aim to be more sustainable over time might include water use, decreasing water pollution, decreasing pesticide use, bettering the social impact and workers' rights conditions, bettering farmers' conditions and becoming better aware of long-term impact of cotton seeds. In 2012, the global value in billions of US dollars of cotton fiber crops was 37 billion US dollars. The world cotton market was estimated at 77 billion in 2014 and 2015. Cotton provides income for more than 250 million people worldwide and employs almost 7% of all labor in developing countries. 300 million farmers in 80 countries rely on cotton industry for their livelihood. 50% more cotton is produced worldwide today on the same amount of land as compared to 40 years ago. Cotton occupies less than 3% of the world's agricultural land. Cotton production provides two crops with each seasonal harvest, cotton fiber, which currently supplies 30% of the world's textile fiber needs, and cotton seed, a source of nutritious cooking oil and a protein-rich supplement for dairy cattle and aqua cattle feeds. 29 million tons of cotton is produced every year. The same as 29 t-shirts for everyone on earth. More than 100 countries in the world grow cotton. Cotton accounts for about 31% of worldwide fiber production. Organic cotton faces different challenges than regular cotton. Organic cotton is expensive to buy. Control of inputs like seeds are put into hands of a few big companies. Organic seeds are difficult to produce and distribute to farmers. Even when they are available, getting them to farmers is de in developing countries where most cotton currently comes from is a challenge. Building the capacity of small farmers to be able to go organic farming and receive necessary certifications is also a challenge. With organic cotton, the prices, the timeliness of payment and market access are not always strong enough to offset the risk of investment made by the farmer. Companies can't just purchase organic cotton. They need to work with suppliers to ensure both quality and transparency along the entire chain.
That includes working with initiatives like Organic Cotton Roundtable to build farmer capacity to produce more organic cotton. In 2014, organic cotton reversed a three-year trend and grew globally by 10%. More and more retailers are now using, incorporating organic cotton into the supply chains. 75% of all cotton produced worldwide in 2015 was genetically modified. In US, 93% of all cotton currently grown is GMO cotton.